I wonder, I just wonder why human beings treat each other in such um, unprintable manners. The owner of Hilton Hotel, Raman Adedoe, is somebody who God has blessed well over and over. But we don't even know the source of the wealth. This man has universities, has colleges in Nigeria, in Ghana, in America. He has, he's into hospitality and he's into several other businesses. So with a man of this means, you will wonder, what would he be finding? What could be the reason why he's engaged in deleting a human being? Someone who paid to lodge in your hotel so that you can write an exam for just two nights. And on the first night, you, you could not with your son. Look at Rohim here. With your son to just delete the man like that. Hello everyone, you're welcome to my channel. If you're new here, you're welcome. If you're an existing viewer, thank you so much for stopping by. I must say a very big thank you to the investigative journalist by excellence, uh, Mr. Riyomi Amuzat, who has selflessly, selflessly worked on this case. Mr. Riyomi Amuzat has put his name on the sands of time. You see, what we do not understand is... In everything we do, uh, I'm only saying it. If you don't put humanity first, then you're just going to be put to shame at the end of the day. Let me put it that way. Because I don't see, I don't see why a highly successful man could derive pleasure in just deleting people like that. Someone who has done nothing to you, a breadwinner, the oak tree of a whole family, just like that. I must say the spirit of um, the late Timothy Adegoke is really very strong. You know, he, he, is, he obviously has a very strong spirit, a good spirit that has refused to rest. Because a lot of people have passed through, you know, have been deleted like that without anything. With no truth revealed, everything will just be, you know, will just be swept under the carpet and that will be the end of it. And even his wife, I must say, is a fantastic man. Even his wife has been, been saying it that her husband never made her cry for one day. Because she lost her own parents very early in life. And this man has always been her parent. When he says he's going somewhere, that is where he's going. When he says he wants to do this, it's a family project. If he say he wants to do that, it's so responsible. That is not very common for men of these days. Now, the man you're seeing on the screen is called Dr. Akiyemi Agbede. Dr. Akiyemi Agbede, I will do a few profile on him now. He's a Nigerian-American mathematics genius and democratic and democrat. A two-time California governorship candidate in 2014 and 2018. He's seeking, he was seeking to replace Vice President Kamala Harris at the U.S. Senate. He was born in Lagos, Nigeria, West Africa, and he attended Baptist Academy Academy of Banikoro, Lagos State, for his higher school certificate and came out with distinction. He studies mathematics at the University of Lagos and he has a PhD in mathematical analysis from the world's most prestigious Ivy League University, University of Cambridge, England, United Kingdom. He also attended the prestigious Redeemed Christian Bible College, Lagos, Nigeria, and came out also with distinction. Thereafter, he went to the United States of America. Um, after he won the U.S. Permanent Resident Lottery. Hmm. However, since being in the United States, he has tremendously used his super genius brain to the benefit of the millions of American students by instilling in them skills, confidence, and competence in solving any mathematical problems. Hmm. So this is the man that is now interested in the case of Rohim Adedoui. I intentionally read his profile so you can have an idea of who he is. He's not just an ordinary Nigerian. And he's not just a Nigerian living in diaspora. You can Google his name. His name is Dr. Akin Yemi. Alright? His name is Dr. Akin Yemi Agbede. So please Google him so that you can know his profile. For somebody to be eyeing the Senate seat that the, the, the current vice president of the U.S. was, was occupying then as a Nigerian then you know that he's a man of, you know, means and a sound person. 
Now let me go back to um Ogbeni Raman are they doing? A lot of people came online to start saying, you know, what is not supposed to be said. Let me put it that way. Because they, they left the main crux of the matter of how could someone who paid her enter a hotel and was just deleted like that. I remember even when Ade Doing was um, taken by the enforcement agents, he did a, an, an audio and shared it on Facebook that he doesn't have any hand in it, this and this and this, and his wife was also speaking. Do you know what the CCTV just revealed? The CCTV, according to um, Mr. Rio Miyamuzad said, that the, the CCTV was tampered with and they had to recouple it. And when they recoupled it, they were able to take the clip of what actually really happened. Which was that they saw Bab, this Baba, Mr. Raman, are they doing? His son, Rahim, are they doing? As you can see, his family all looking fresh and chubby. And also, um, a man called Moshud, who is a student of, I think, Kodudua University also. They entered, they broke into a, um, late Timothy's room. And they did what they had to do and came out with all the evidence they were carrying. And they said when they showed this clip to Baba, are they doing? He could not say anything. They said, Baba, is this you? He said, yes. Is this your son? Yes. This is should Yes. So what were you going, the OC of an organization, what were you going to do in the room? And they came out with all the exhibits. So people, I don't know what you believe in, but this is beyond being a Christian or a Muslim or an atheist. This has to do with humanity. Someone who has done nothing to you. And they were bringing a lot of information. Bringing false, false counterclaims when all of this were going on. One of them was that they said, eh, they saw a uh, kind of, I don't want to use that word. This is YouTube. Beside the drug, beside his bed. That that is what would have given, um, Timothy was planning to use it. So that it would give him power because he was having an affair with the receptionist. And all of that. Can you imagine it? And the wife kept saying, my husband... Is not like that. He did not do that. How many women, even in their period of pain, can stand and say, my husband is not like that. He cannot do that. How many? Let us check ourselves. Number two, one other thing that, you know, they tried to do was, uh, when the autopsy came out, they were arguing. They were arguing, right, that... Um, and that was the wrong autopsy. They had to go and do another doctor, another one, and bring it. And the police said no. One other thing they also did was, are they doing his lawyer? Came out to say, uh, are they doing under attention? He had diabetes. He had this one. He cannot be um, arrested. He might lead to complications and everything. The police said, nope, we are not going to release him. He's going to stay in custody. Because this case is not, is not a small case anymore. So a lot of things have been cooked online and all of that. But the good news also is um, that the Mr. Dr. Akiemi Agbede, that I just mentioned to you now, uh, had reached out to um, Mr. Riyomi Amza to say, the American government has given Rahim Adedoin, that's the son, the MD, or the son of Adedoin, who is somewhere in Ghana, enjoying his life with women, and also the Moshud, the accomplice that he did this thing together, who is a student at, I think, Udua University or something, that same university, that they, they have just 105 hours from this hour to come out and surrender themselves to the nearest authority. That they are giving them 105 hours, 105 hours to come out and, you know, surrender themselves or else... If once the American government are able to, you know, to approach, there's a man, I don't want to call his name, I think, I mean, yeah, is it safe to do that? Saddam Hussein was fished out. That's, that is the way these guys will be fished out. Because immediately the case happened, Rahim Adi doing took off. And people were shouting, declare this man. Where is he? Why did he have to take off? Because all the staff that were arrested at that time, they confessed. That it was the MD Rohima did doing that was part of the thing and all of that. So it just brings us to this um, matter of, you know, in Nigeria, we are used to um, worshipping rich men. <laughs> we, we see that they, they, they can do no wrong. In Nigeria, if you say a rich man did something, people will almost die there. 
maybe because of the bag of rice they give them or whatever. But the truth is, you that you want to defend them, you are not even safe because they, you might be the next person. You might just be the next person. So, we are happy and like Mr. Uyomi Amzad said, let's give kudos when kudos is supposed to be given to the uh, IG. Um, that's the um, uh, Tunde Disu who made sure that truth prevailed. But one thing we need to do, we also need to pray for this man called Uyomi Amzad. That man, we need more of him. And the truth of the matter is, people like this are really celebrated the way they are supposed to be celebrated. Nigerians all over the world have been scared since this case came out to say, how safe is it for us to come back home? Um, are we, should we come back? We are scared. Safety, everything. And most of them, of course, when you go to Nigeria, you might spend some time with your family. Or you might spend some time in hotels. Or even if you don't, you have to go to another state. That is not where you, you resided when you were in Nigeria. You have to lodge in a hotel. And if it's not safe, what are we doing? So at this moment, I am excited. I'm glad that the case is going the way it's going. We thank God. And we will wait and still pray to see the full stop of the story. So to all good nature people out there, to all good friends and family, well wishers of the late Timothy, we say thank God for all he's done and we pray we will not fall victim into this kind of situation. Our children, our family and friends will not fall victim to the kind of body doing his family because the truth is God has given us the power of choices. So why must we make a choice to bring pain to other people? Why should we make that choice? And whoever sees the dynasty are they doing as beautiful say, oh, I want to be like this. Uh, cut soap for me. Please mind who you are praying to be cut, cut, cut um, soap for. Because some soaps hmm, bring disgrace. And, you know, everlasting 